friends, and thank you for being here. Uh, my name is MC Henron. I'll be the MC and uh, moderator for today's virtual event. So today's symposium titled the uh, Education Engagement on the Role of Nigerian Diaspora in the Nation Building of a New Nigeria was organized by a group of Nigerian intellectuals that reside here in the USA. The lecture will be presented by His Excellency Peter Obi. I will have a very short program today, key highlights being the lecture itself and then followed by questions. Uh, the questions uh, that, that will be asked today were collected from a pool of questions uh, that have been pre-screened by the organizers of this event. Uh, for the question and answer session then, uh, we'll have four groups led by four moderators. Each of the moderators have five questions and uh, we'll be appointing individuals to ask these questions. We ask that each person keep their question down to two minutes. Our plan then is to have each moderator's session, all the five questions go, and then His Excellency will respond uh, uh, to all the five questions in one sitting just to help us accommodate uh, time and to make sure we respect his time as well. It is then with great honor that I will pass on the platform to the lead organizer of this event, the woman that really put this together, Dr. Cordelia Odo. Dr. Odo, over to you. Thank you. We can hear you. Okay. Thank you with our, with, with our one and only Mark Henro, the best MC in this area of the, of the country. Thank you again. Um, Your Excellency Peter Obi, Prof. Pat Utomi, uh, Chief Valentine Ozibo, I'm not sure he's there, and all of you who called in, welcome to the educational engagement by Peter Obi. All protocols observed. It was in the late October 2022 that Mr. Eugene Abinson contacted me to host His Excellency Peter Obi. I was excited about the idea, given my experiences with Obama's first presidential campaign and the various groups I belong to in working for a better Nigeria 2023. I considered it a privilege to be called to serve. I enlisted the help of my good friend, High Chief Dr. Patience Onwar, and the educational engagement for Peter B was born. I sprang into action by creating committees of dedicated and accomplished individuals who invested time, treasure, and talent to see that the educational engagement becomes a success. The committees include the Culinary Committee of High-End Caterers led by Stella Gobwa, Mamati, Patricia Machi, Ego Sonny Mogo, Happiness Opera, Mr. Geofochukwani, and Lady Clem Okoji. The Transportation Committee by Chief Patrick Anama and Chief Tony Okoji. The Security Committee led by Joseph Oke Onyuzo and Chima Ojenta the Photography Committee led by Peter KK and Henry Okoye, the Program Committee led by Dr. Odara Wankwo, Dr. Chete Eze Lian, Mrs. Cordes, the Magazine Committee by High Chief Dr. Patience Onoa, Ike Chukuchi Bozo, and Dr. Cordelia Udo, the Checking Committee led by Mr. Martin Uche Ewe, and his supporters included Ikedi Udo, Ifan Yokoji, Adez Zemwobodo, and Chinedu Chukwan. The entertainment group comprising Mike Henro, Chisomoji, who will sing a special song for our excellency tonight. Obino Dadi Muna, the MC with an MD, Ike Okoji, Mr. Gibson, Pardon C. And above all, my husband, Dr. Chris Udo, the chairman of the town hall event, who together with me hosted the dinner party. Your Excellency Peter Obi, these individuals volunteer their services at no cost and spend their own money to cook, for security, for gas and car service, traveled from faraway states with only one wish, to see, hear you, and possibly take photos with you. Most importantly, to make sure you succeed and pave the way 
for a better Nigeria for all. This meeting is an educational event and not a campaign event. It is all about our Excellency Peter B and not Labour Party. Your Excellency Peter B, the topic of your speech today is the role of the Nigerian diaspora in the nation building of New Nigeria. Please permit the original initiator of this program, Mr. Eugene Abenson, to talk before you start. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Odo. We'll now pass the floor over to Mr. Abenson. I think he's probably on mute. Tudor, could you make a, Mr. Abinson a co-host so that he's able to unmute himself? Thank you, uh, Mr. Eugene Abinson, if you could make him a co-host, he will be able to unmute himself. Otherwise, he's not able to do that. Or you might go down and unmute him. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, yeah, okay. Good. <laughs> Your Excellency, after assessing the outcome of your several United States events through August 2022, it became clear that, a more, that more is needed to be done to to, to increase the humanitarian just one second, please. Nigeria the desperate input in the campaign. Oh. With this in mind, I conceived of an event in the East Coast Mid-Atlantic region of the United States that would address the apparent shortcomings of your prior events in the US. I quickly identified Dr. Cordelia Udo, given her experience in the Obama campaign and her natural gifts in raising awareness and mobilizing resources. Besides, she is the wife of my old friend from our primary school days at St. John Primary School of that one nature, and our secondary school days at Christ the King College John Nature, your own alma mater. Within days, she coupled together a slate of professionals, most of them very highly accomplished Nigerian women professionals, and also many men of similar qualities. So the educational engagement on the role of the Nigerian diaspora in the nation building of a new Nigeria became came into being. Many key members of your campaign were informed and updated as the progress and many arrangements of the event unfolded. As Nigerian election day drew closer, the dynamics of the, uh, and the dynamics and realities of the local political system demanded your full presence and attention to put out the many fires that are literally emerging on a daily basis. But we were still hopeful that given the non-political nature and the educational engagement of the educational engagement and the attendance substantial resources that you will still find time or way to make it on the appointed date and be with us. It did not turn out that way. However, we are delighted and elated, elated to have you live in our midst this night. In recognition of the time, effort that was committed to the educational engagement project by these folks. And this effort does not end here tonight, as some of our members, including Dr. Cordelia Aoudo, Mr. Martin Egbert, and myself, on our own, are implementing, as we speak, efforts on the ground to bring the needed education directly to the people in diverse localities of the country. So, Your Excellency, again, 
we welcome you. And you have, as time and time again, shown that you are of the people and for the people. Thank you so much for giving us the opportunity to interact with you again, Your Excellency. Thank you, Mr. Winston. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the big moment we've been waiting for. Um, he transformed the face of Anambra State and made it a yardstick for measuring good governance in Nigeria. He touched on all sectors, education, agriculture, healthcare, small business, infrastructure, and local industries, to mention but a few. Ladies and gentlemen, without much ado, I want to introduce to you, and it's my honor to introduce to you, by special grace of God, the next incoming president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, His Excellency, Mr. Peter Obi. The floor is yours, sir. We can't hear we can't hear you, Your Excellency. We still can't hear him. Now, Your Excellency, we're actually ready. Your Excellency, we're ready whenever you are. I don't think you can hear us anymore. Okay, okay. Right. Okay. Yeah, so we can We can hear you now. I'm hearing him now. We yes. can hear the person that asked the question. Why don't you use on mute with the Martin, check your end. Hello, Martin. Are you looking at the audio? Because the audio is not good at all. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And he uses his phone and connect and talk. Alright, just moving now. I'm going to move it down. Yes. If he is
Hello. What? Martin, check your end. If he can hear us, can we start with our questions and then he can hear you, you Mark. Can he hear us? Honorable, uh, your excellency, can you hear us? Huh? He's muted. Uh, he's not muted, actually. He's not muted? No. But if he can hear us, we start with our questions and then have him get in. <laughs> I think His Excellency has multiple audio where he is. That's why we we get echo and feedback when he tries to talk. We can hear the people in the room, but we cannot hear him. So I'm guessing probably use the make the laptop a primary audio, and he can just speak into the air and we will pick it up versus the earpiece. Yeah, Maybe that we can see his mouth move, but we can't hear anything he's saying. But we can hear people in the room. Yeah, us can we start our questions? We can hear you, sir. We heard you now. Can we start with our questions? Yeah. Look, I think I think he's trying to talk now. So let's. Uh... Hmm? I'm not going to be my phone, I'm just speaking. Yeah. I'm going to be like that. Very short. Right. When you're on my phone, they move. I was just talking. I wouldn't have been connected at all. Just, I can just. Yeah, because when I talk, they hear. So why is it that they can hear uh, me? Your, your Excellency, can you hear us? He can. He can? He can? Check out these devices you put in my bed your legs. All right. Just, just keep your own light on. Okay. okay. Maybe you can speak. Hello? Yeah. 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 Okay, just speak. So this is the phone, WhatsApp call to my phone. Can you hear me now? Yeah. <laughs> Can you hear me? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. You can hear me now. Yes, sir. Okay. Let me start my first sincerely apologizing to you. Trying to 
this meeting this evening. But respectfully, we are not busy with our and the time of the year. For me, I I need to answer questions this Follow down with what is happening in China, in India, and virtually other countries I can imagine or have thought it. Today, everybody knows the role of the diaspora in Philippines, the border. Diaspora remittances have now surpassed the revenue from the we start. And I believe that we're going to do Tomorrow, 
in the states and showing that the COVID is going down the road. So the vessels are going back. So the vessels are going back. The vessels are going back. The vessels are going back. This is you. So you are looking very critical of how you to succeed. But I have that interaction. I thank you. I'm going to thank you. I All right, thank you, His Excellency. Uh, unfortunately, due to technical difficulties, we are unable to to hear the greater part of uh, this beautiful lecture. Um, um, uh, we just ask if the technical team over there can override every other microphone and just use the computer microphone. That will really be very helpful because I think the other ones he has, yeah. although they are yeah. fancy, is overriding the computer mic and that's making it difficult for us to hear him. Let's keep it simple and just use the good old um, computer that, that, that will work or even or even cell phone. Because we can't hear, we couldn't hear 95% of what you said, His Excellency, and I don't want you to re repeat yourself. Um, so, <coughs> MC Henry, I think this was going to happen. Mm. Let's see if Ike, the Ikechuku that is there, can they just dial in with their phone? Okay. Yeah, let them dial in with the phone. If they can dial in with the phone, we can ask our questions. But it's also very important to know if they are hearing us. If they can hear us and Ikechuku can dial on the phone. I'm dialing now. My phone there is connected. on WhatsApp, and that's what we are hearing you from. All right, so Ikechuku, if you can hear us, if you can hear us, that's actually quite good. Let's ask the first question and see if His Excellency can hear us. If you he can hear us, you can use your phone and respond, if that's okay. Okay, so let, let me uh, go over to the questions. And then I'll, I'll be passing it to. Okay, so I guess uh, we'll call on Dr. Chete to lead the first uh, uh, five questions and uh, we'll go from there. Let's see if you can hear. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, MC can we make sure he can, he's able to answer though and he can hear us? And he here also we can ask our questions. I don't think they can hear us. Hmm? This is frustrating, very frustrating. 
can oh he he has not been able to hear us that's what it is this will be it we're not having another one i don't, I don't see why someone cannot use your cell phone over there uh, cordelia please mm -hmm. cordelia mm -hmm. so i have dr baloba beside his excellence can you hear me now yeah better yeah excellent beautiful so, Prof, I can, so you can, I can hear this on now. Yes, you can hear me now. You can hear you very clear. Okay. Do you want me to repeat what I said earlier? Yes, please. If you don't mind. <laughs> that would be wonderful. <laughs> Impossible, yes. Okay. Let me start by saying I, I must sincerely, sincerely apologize that we were not able to meet physically as planned. At the time I was to visit for the physical meeting, there were a number of issues which made it inevitable, possible for me to be there. So I sincerely apologize. And thank you for despite my not being able to physically attend to still stay on and be committed to the project. I thank you, Sister Cordelia, brother Eugene, and all of you who are involved with the planning, who are attending, who are participating. I appreciate everything you're doing for our country, because you're doing this for our country, Nigeria, and how we can build a better place for our children. Though, as mentioned as the keynote speaker, I will only be introducing and mentioning the topic again for us to have a, an interaction, which I think will be more fruitful and beneficial to the project. When we talk about the role of diaspora, in nation building, one can go back to several places in the Bible. But the most exemplary is Joseph coming to the rescue of the house of Israel while serving Pharaoh in Egypt. In most recent times, studies found all over the place, from Japan, what they were able to do after their difficult time of restoration in cause of production of prosperity, China rising owes it as far as what they were able to do. Same thing is, I can say, of India. And India is rising today. They owe it to the diaspora contribution. A Nigerian case might be different if we are committed to turn around the country. Today, that's why with us is not far more than what we earn from oil. But most importantly, your contribution, the ideas, knowledge, will be far more important the turnaround of our country. 
We cannot talk about going around the country, especially as we move from our promise that a new Nigeria is possible. We can't talk about turning around other we secure and unite the country, provide a regulatory environment, ensure rule of law, ensure that the country is moving from consumption to production. There's no more important partner than you. We need you to help. We need you to be there, to be able, the first investors we hope to attract is you. The knowledge, the idea, we look forward to your contribution in turn around Nigeria. I wish to have a very useful interaction just by the delay tonight. Thank you, and God bless all of you. Thank you very much, His Excellency, and thanks for doing this a second time. We appreciate your patience and uh, your dedication. Um, at this point, uh, we will move over to the Q&A section, which I think would uh, lead the interaction you, you, you suggested. So I'll be calling on uh, Dr. Chete to lead the first uh, uh, series of our uh, Q&A session. Dr. Chete, over to you. Hi, um, thank you, uh, um, MC Hero. Thank you, Your Excellency, for such an excellent introduction. And thank you for uh, giving us the opportunity um, to hear from you today. Um, like MC Hero said, these questions are gonna be in sections. Actually, they're like, there are four sections and each section has about four to five questions. Um, so we're thinking we'll ask the, the, the questions in batches, um, like the first section, which I'm gonna take is, uh, is on diaspora investments. And there are four or five questions under that. So I would assume you would want to take notes uh, because we just go down, ask the questions one after the other, unless you prefer one by one. Um, so we'll do that and then, uh, then we'll, uh, we'll let you answer the questions under this section and then we'll move to the next section. Okay, so the, quest, the, the section I'm moderating here is on diaspora investments. And the first question will be um, asked by Mr. S um, Seven Azumba. Seven, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. All right, all right. All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Seven Izumba. Uh, I flew out from Florida to PA to uh, meet His Excellency, but unfortunately, he couldn't make it. My question today for His Excellency Toby, relates to the discrimination that abounds in Nigeria at all levels of society. For example, charges of fees for clearing shipments depend on the addresses of the final destination of that shipment in Nigeria, or federal programs for say agricultural projects, power systems, uh, and so on. I, uh, so I did so well. Is excess, is excess. Oh, charges. like charges, charges and fees, like custom levies, payment for fees. It depends on what location you're going to, the, 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 the fees differ. Same thing with like the passports and who's, what, what states are you getting a passport on? You know, the, 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 the treatment is different. Uh, or with the federal contracts, you know, agricultural projects, power systems, and so on. You know, successful award depends on the your religion or your region. You know, uh, the Southeast region itself is one of the most difficult for investors to partner with the state government for investments advertised by the same state government. It takes years. It's so the, the, there's so much bureaucracy involved. Uh, as if the idea is based on extortion without any good intentions. The, the above issues are quite discouraging to diaspora. Uh, how can your government intervene moving forward? Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Seven. Um, 
The next question is going to be by Dr. Chris Odor. Dr. Chris Odor is the chairman of the Town Hall Educational Event and also the host of the Dinner Party Husband to our, our very formidable Dr. Um, Cordelia Odor. Go ahead, Dr. Chris, please. Is Dr. Chris here? Hello. 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 Can you hear? Can you hear me? Yes. Is your video on, please? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. We. Okay. I... All right. Okay. Um. I'm. I'm Doctor Uda Christopher Uda, and uh, when I want to introduce myself a little bit more. I went to school at. Uh, CKC Onita. And, um, you know, what we learned there, what, okay, okay, what we learned there carries us throughout uh, most of our lives. So we really appreciate the education and the practice that we, that uh, came along with uh, going to CKC. Another thing I want to say is, the attitude of His Excellency, Mr. Peter B. You see, I mean, this is how patient he, he, he is. Most, most, most people will be upset by the technical glitches, but he's patient, okay? But anyway, what I wanna say are a few things. Your character, the character of his Excellency is a combination of so many leading people in America and also in Britain. I want to name a few of them. Uh, being uh, Abraham Lincoln, he was the one who um, prevented America from being a split, co split country. So is, uh, is your, your Excellency. Um, I know, I know, uh, most people know that Nigeria is at the crossroads. And so you are the one who's gonna be our savior. Another character that uh, most people know about is JFK, you know, John F. Kennedy. He's the, oh, he's the visionary leader, okay? He is the one who said he was gonna take America to the moon and he was gonna do a, a lot of great things, not because those things were hard. I mean, not because those things were easy, but because they are hard. Your excellency, you have said, that you want to take Nigeria from being a, a, a consumer country to a productive country. And that is just as hard as what uh, JFK had uh, mentioned. Another great person, another great person that you really embody so much is Winston Churchill, who never gave up on his people. Even when Hitler was on top of him, on top of Europe, he never gave up through his motivational and inspirational talks. He was able to rally the people and America came along and the rest is history. Okay, you yourself, you yourself, I mean, you come across as somebody who can never, never give up. I mean, look at what has been happening with all these uh, te technical glitches. You just have the patience, okay? And that goes a whole, uh, uh, a, a long way, all right? And the truth of it is the crowd, the crowd that follow you, the, the youth, that follow you, it shows that they have so much confidence in you. It shows that they trust you and you yourself, you are not leaving any stone unturned to see that Nigeria is rescued. We see that, we, we appreciate that. Now, my question is this, my question is this. Oftentimes, or sometimes you have mentioned that the central point of your policy we be to create to create a, a level playing field, a level playing field. Okay, that's what you've said a few times. What I want to know and what you want to know is what would that level playing field be like? Can you give us examples of what a level playing field are or is? Thank you. Thank you so much, Dr. Old. A very passionate submission. Thank you. Um, the next question is going to be by myself. Um, so this is number three question. So uh, by introduction, I'm Dr. Chete Ezenli. I'm a cardiologist by training at the Cleveland Clinic, Cleveland, Ohio. 
um, received my medical training uh, from the University of Nigeria. So I share the same alma mater with His Excellency. I'm a member of the programs committee for this educational event. So my question to His Excellency is this. In 2016, the federal government drafted a diaspora policy to mobilize and harness the potential of the Nigerian diaspora for national development. Unfortunately, the policy document still awaits full implementation, arguably due to lack of political will and or appropriate physical policies. So my question specifically is, if you become the president, your excellency, would you consider taking out the recommendations given by the president of the African Development Bank Group, Dr. Akin Wumi Adeshaya, who's, who while noting that Nigeria is among the top 10 remittance recipients globally with $19.2 billion in 2021, advocated that, um, quote, African countries should one, securitize remittances to provide investments. I would add investments in capital projects, such as building much medical, much needed medical infrastructure. Two, establish ministries of diaspora to give policy priority to the specific needs of the diaspora, as well as expand the investment opportunities for them through special incentives. What's closed? Thank you very much. Um, number four question um, will be asked by Ms. Stella Agobwa. Are you there, Ms. Stella? Ms. Stella? Okay. So can we move on to Ms. Patricia Amechi? Good evening. Hello, Stella speaking. Okay. Welcome, Ms. Stella. Please ask um, your question to, to His Excellency. Good evening, everyone, and good evening, His Excellency. I am Stella Agobo. Yeah. I am Stella Agobo. Can Hello. We, can we see your picture? Okay. No, I can hear you. Okay. All right. All right. Okay. <clears throat> I am Stella Agobo. I'm a registered nurse and also a licensed caterer. I was the director of the culinary committee for the Sam Patent Educational Program. And then I took two days of my job to prepare and cook the delicious food that include ofaku with rice, got meat pepper soup, <laughs> onubuebusi, vegetable hey, soup hey, for you. fried rice, Oba and Dabacha. Thank you. But unfortunately, His Excellency, due to unforeseen circumstances, you were not present to enjoy good traditional delicacies from us. Thank you very I, much. Thank you, His Excellency. Thank you. My question is what measures do you have to encourage those Nigerians that are willing to relocate? back home to Nigeria to do so. Thank oh, you. Thank you. Okay, great. Thank you so much, Mr. Goboa. The last question is gonna be by Ms. Patricia Amechi. Are you there, Ms. Uh, Patricia? Yes, I'm here, Patricia Amechi. Um, good evening, His Excellency. Good evening, everybody. And happy evening. Christmas. My name is Mrs. Patricia Wanyama Amachi. I live in Philadelphia and I'm a leading Can we, can we see your region. face a little, Patricia, so that. Uh, yeah. yeah, okay. Can you see me now? Yeah. All right. Okay, I'm sorry. Uh, I live in Philadelphia and I'm a leading caterer in the region. I heard that you were coming to Philadelphia and I washed these native terra leaves very well making sure there was no sand and prepared this delicious moi moi for you. However, hopefully oh, yeah. you didn't show up. <laughs> I, will be, I, will, I, will, I will come to the White House to prepare this delicious moi moi again for you. That's very right. soon, by his grace. My question is this, sir. How can people in diaspora uh 
be encouraged and incentivized to invest in Nigeria. Thank you, sir. Okay, thank you so much. Um, so these are the five questions under the diaspora investment section. Um, over to you, Your Excellency. Thank you. Well, I'll just, um, I'll try, I'm sure probably I'll, these questions, I'll just answer them as a brief. Um, yeah. The first question, but as a child, is a fees. A different uh, that discriminatory fees that are charged all over. Oh, and everything. What you get in a, is what you get in a system where there's no rule of law, where there's no regulatory environment. You know, that's where there's no law and order. So when we say that our first job is to secure a United Nations, provide a society where there's rule of law, where there's a clear environment, where there's law and order, this is what we're saying. This is why we take care of this. And it's very critical. In the society we live today in America, one of the greatest contributors, if not the greatest, the GDP, is intangible assets provided by rule of law. You are not, everything is clear, is transparent. And if there's a difference, you're sure that you can get proper place, report, escort, presentation, and get it solved. So these are things we need to On what my brother, let me say, since we want to speak this, maybe I'll say senior, junior, because I don't know the year left. Thank you for comparing me to these great people, but I, I don't think um, anything near them. I'm just trying to offer my own little services. The only thing I can tell you from a level playing field, the reason why you're in America today, among them, that America offers an opportunity where your life, your hard work, and your talent will match up the opportunity. In Nigeria, it's not so. In Nigeria, you can be the most hardworking. You can be the most talented. Everything. Even from education. If you look at now, in the federal school, the cutoff points are different. And I'm rested today because of what we did in the education have the highest cut of points in Nigeria of about 130. While the other states where cut of points is less than 10%. So you go for the start, cut of point is 130, other person is 10. When you come out, it could be Perform first class, you're looking for a job, have the best, most hardworking. The job will be given to somebody 
who already even have been able to pass through the same, achieve the same level of education. Appointments are made on literally on course based on the nepotism, based on, which is one of the first forms of corruption. When we talk about corruption, nepotism is one of the worst forms of corruption. These are things we mean when we say a level playing field where people who know that they are going to get what they're looking for, achieve where they want to be by ensuring a fair competition. On national policy, you know, again, because the country does uh, is not serious, and those who are serving their incompetent. That is why they are doing, not doing what they are supposed to do. If you ensure implementation or transfer policy, ensure that you create a ministry for that purpose and they are supported, could actually double their remittances. Today, Philippines have a similar thing. The Philippines sees about 50 billion diaspora remittance. Measures to ensure that people relocate to Nigeria from Stella and Patricia what do we do to encourage and support the aspirants coming back to the best? The only measures we need is number one is to secure the country. Because nobody goes where they need security to invest, no matter how profitable. Governments in Nigeria talk about return on investment. Before somebody can think about return on investment, he has to think about his life, whether he will be alive to enjoy the return. So you need to secure the country. You need to unite the country. Again, like I was said in the last question, you need to provide an environment where there's rule of law, where there's law and order, everything. With all this, you'll be encouraged to come back. You'll be encouraged. There's something that you notice now. If you say you're coming back, even for just Christmas or any celebration, it is your own relation that will be asking you not to come back. Before, they will be begging you to come back. I recall in the past, I recall even all over the world, at times like this, people are reminding their families, their own cousins and every family, oh, these people are coming back. Why are you not coming back? Oh, this family is coming back. Everybody say, oh, well, I'm coming back. Now, we are the ones asking you not to come back. We are the ones the credit cost. So we will provide enabling environment for you to come back and invest. And unless you start coming back to invest, no genuine investor Globally, will come back. Those who are coming today are those who are helping in the criminality that is today all over Nigeria. They are either foreigners who are catching fishing in our territorial waters, 
illegally, mining our minerals illegally, helping to steal our oil, everything which you want to replace with genuine investors who want to come here, invest in critical areas of development that are start helping us to create jobs and everything. And you will be part of that. That is why when I talk about when my brother mentioned about Abraham Lincoln, JFK, and all of it. My commitment is to help that turn around and ensure that we have a society where people can say, this is what is, I'm coming to invest, safety of my investment. If anything goes wrong, I'll seek redress through the judicial system. And I'm sure to get a fair year. These are things that make a society. Society where the security, society where it's like uniting people, have said repeatedly that people should have responsible. When I talk about corruption, said it, hold me responsible. Thank you. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Thank you for the uh, for responding to those questions. A lot of things to uh, unpack with that answer. Thank you. So we will be going to the second uh, phase of our question this evening, and the theme would be industry. And can you hear us? Yeah, we can hear you. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I must make an, uh, probably an overall comment. Um, well, I, I was just saying that we need to be rounding up with it, at least now for more than one and a half hours. Um, so we should be rounding up. <clears throat> let, 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 let me say that uh, we are very um, happy that we've been able to get this uh, meeting together and to listen to uh, Mr. Peter Obi's perspective on the diaspora. This is an area that we have spent a lot of time talking about. Uh, he repeatedly says that <laughs> the challenge for the new Nigeria is moving people from sharing the booty and consumption to production. I clearly one of the ways that we can best move to a manufacturing economy is to return to the country's factor endowments and to base our manufacturing experience on taking endowments like agricultural endowments around the country, building value chains based on latent comparative advantage of those endowments into global markets. Uh, if there are people who have um, a clear network, a reputation, and the comfort of having come out of Nigeria and therefore can better understand the risks in the environment, this diaspora, which is why the Japanese diaspora in Germany after the Meiji restoration was significantly responsible for Japan's technological awakening at the beginning of the 20th century. Uh, in the same way as Indian academics, you take something like globalization as a big argument in academia about globalization, you will see that while people like Mr. Stiglitz were writing that series like uh, 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 the Colombia colleague, 
of uh, Felix uh, Jagdish Bhagwati uh, was writing in praise of globalization. Because essentially, Indian academics used it to encourage uh, outsourcing, which went significantly to India. And this is why an India that was technically bankrupt in 1991 received a huge shot in the arm at the point in time by 1994, his foreign reserves which was down to three weeks trading money in 1991, was surging up around 1994 by a billion dollars a week. And the major source of that inflow was non resident Indians, as they are called. Uh, there is no doubt in our minds that the future of Nigeria depends on the network of contacts that those of you who are out there in the diaspora bring to the table. The savings that you have made, uh, the Nigerian diaspora is now, in the opinion of many, perhaps the most well off uh, nationality community in North America. If all this combined to drive the pumping up of the Nigerian economy, then we could have a new country that we can really truly be proud of. Uh, as uh, Mr. Peter will be saying all the time, uh, a new Nigeria is possible. Come, but it's not come possible here. because it's not possible because there are people like you who are out there. I think that this is perhaps a, an appropriate note for us to try and wind down this conversation. Okay. Um, uh, can I beg? I'm going to get another chance. On the 7th of January, we're going to have a, a, a telethon and we invite Nigerians all over the world to join this 24 hour telethon at which issues facing Nigeria will be discussed from one hour to another hour all day long. Nigerians can call in, can send in charts, uh, but uh, clearly, uh, it's a partnership between the diaspora and the thinking class, if you will, in Nigeria. That's how the new Nigeria will be. Thank you. Also. Can I beg your pardon? Can I beg your pardon, Prof? Can we, can we all, uh, can we just read out all the questions and then your your Excellency can pick the ones he wants to comment on? Can we just read them one after the other? I should. No. Okay. No problem. Okay. Thank you. So, uh, Henry, time to go. Okay. So I'll I'll just read it all all the way, and then we can go from there. So the second, uh, based on uh, for industry and foreign policy theme, the question is: As you move Nigeria uh -huh. from consumption to production, uh, who, is, what who is the person who is supposed to ask that? Dr. High, uh, High Chief Dr. Onoha. So please, okay. High Chief, is, go ahead. Is she online? I do. I didn't see her online. Okay, we'll go to the next person until she comes back. Okay. So. Uh, yeah, please. This is Christmas midnight. It's not going to be nice for us to enter Christmas. Okay. Go ahead. Who is the next person? Uh, do Double Doc and Jew Moha Umora. Is she online? Yes, she can go ahead and read. All right. If she's not ready, I'll read it out for her. I can just, if someone no, can- Let's move to the next up. person. Okay, next question is that Dr. Do, uh, Dr. Paul Ezuku is online. Dr. Paul, yeah. just make yours quick. Okay. While we're waiting for Dr. Paul, can Anthony Keme, Dr. Anthony Keme also get ready? He's the next. Okay. I can just blow through the questions. Uh, then uh, Chief Uke Ilonzo is the next. Whoever can read, just step in and read your okay. question. This is Dr. Keme. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Okay. Okay. Dr. Anthony Keme is the immediate past president of NAPSA and one of the great promoters of diaspora and engagement in Nigeria. And I will make it quick. Uh, good evening or good morning, Your Excellency. Uh, thank you for being here. And um, my 
question is related to globalization. And the last speaker you invited alluded to what I am very, very keen on because we believe that the diaspora can help the a lot. Globalization and opportunity presents to Nigeria. I love what you always remind Nigerians that your vision is to transform Nigeria from a consuming nation to a producing nation. And we also know that that is something the countries you mentioned have taken advantage of. You talked about India, you talked about China, you talked about, in fact, the Jews also have done that. And basically what it is is to look beyond your nation and look at the globe as a land of opportunity and identify areas of global need that you have comparative advantage in. I am in the pharmaceutical sector and the API we use for manufacturing drugs come mainly from China and India, okay? And Malaysia is one country that arguably had taken palm from Nigeria and today we import from them. Even though some people say that's not the case, but we know they overtook us in export of palm. My question is, what plans do you have to go beyond us producing to satisfy our need, but to identify globally areas where we have comparative advantage and create incentives, create an enabling environment for Nigeria to produce for the world so that we can increase our foreign exchange earnings and boost our economy because there's no way we can grow without taking advantage of such opportunity. Thank you, Your Excellency. Thank you. All right, so that was Dr. Uh, Akem, uh, Dr. Ilun, uh, Chief Ilonzo, okay, Ilonzo. Yes. Uh, His Excellency, can you hear me? Yes. Okay, good. Um, His Excellency, we've been following you. We wish you're going to win to become the president of Nigeria. Uh, based on what you have been saying, you have the data for Nigeria. And now, we are being told, and it's obvious, $20 billion plus goes to Nigeria from diaspora. And I'm sure USA maybe 50%. And it goes to consumption. His Excellency, if you become the president of Nigeria, can you change that to production instead of consumption? You know, Nigeria is running deficit. To give you an example, I saw you in a canoe at River Niger because of the flooding. And River Niger has been projected for dredging. So from Cameroon, when they open the floodgate, it goes to River Benu, it comes to the south, it comes to Bayesta, it floods everybody. And we are losing millions or billions of dollars. In the last couple of days, supplementary budget was 800 billion we need to naira start. to solve these flood-related issues by building dams, by doing irrigation for agriculture. My question to you, US of A has been for the past 30 years tried to help Nigeria in renewable energy, in building dams, mostly in the Southeast. River Niger was 1,000 megawatts if dam is built and put roadway on top of it and dredge River Niger. If you become president of Nigeria, can you, His Excellency, bring it this diaspora money into production? That's my question. Thank you. Um. Uh, can uh, Dr. Wanko take over and read all the other questions quickly for us? Unless anybody can read their own quickly, so we can, we can wrap up. Okay, anyone that is ready, please read yours so we can wrap up. It has to be a minute each. No, uh, Your Excellency, uh, this is uh, Egbe Martins. Uh, I just have a few uh, comments to make, just very briefly if you will consider creating a diaspora think tank to assist your government in 
remotely providing advice and evaluation of programs and projects. Simple. Thank you. All right. Um, the uh, just for the interest of time, Your Excellency, uh, uh, Mr. Peter Obi. My name is Dr. Odira Wankwo. Um, I'm, a, I'm a, a, an associate professor of pediatrics and a pediatric intensivist here. I'm just going to quickly read those questions. If you're not able, again, for the interest of time, if you cannot uh, provide can, your I, can I just Can I just hold this? We have our biggest donor there who is now crying on the phone that she, she was overlooked from asking questions. Uh, hi, Chief, please, can you go ahead? Okay. Are you there? Can you mute yourself and ask your question? What's your name? Hi, Chief. Hi, Chief Dr. Patience Onoha. Hi, Chief, we're waiting for you. Let me see. Can we bring her up and uh, mute and unmute her? Oh, right. she, she called in as a Zoom user, that's why. Ah, can you unmute yourself and talk? Yeah. Okay, now, I, now I'm unmuted now. No, I have been here for the longest time. It's like you can't talk even when you wanted to. Um, okay, um, Your Excellency, very yeah. glad to be here uh, with you, and we are very glad to be here. Uh, my name is High Chief Dr. Patience Onoha, and um, this, uh, the center spread here, it's me up here, okay? And uh, I have passionately followed you with your speech and everything. And it's likened to the Kennedy. Don't think about what your country can do for you. <laughs> Ask yourself what you can do for your country. And that is my passion. And really, as in Nigeria, we are very, very handicapped. I don't care what some of us, like me, what resources you can do to help. We can have the tools, but when you have your hands tied because of lack of security, bad road is very hard to do anything or you know uh, as we can speak in Igbo uh, way big as we can so that's the main big thing um so right now my question I think somebody kind of pick up on that um it's you have talked about you know as that you're going to your passion is to move Nigeria from consumption to production. Um, so now the thing here is what plans, what plans do we have or do you have, you know, for small, medium, large scale farmers in terms of security, um, good road mechanization, storage, processing and exporting, and aside from all this, or in other words, in addition to this, what measures do we have or you have in place for security and good route? Uh, because without good route, it really we are halted very much. Without security, no, nobody moves. Uh, this is a Christmas time. I brought out a lot of things for you know, people back home uh, for a cherry Christmas, but nobody wants to go to the area because they're scared. They're gonna be killed, lack of security, and everything I sent came in late. And these are the issues that we are dealing with. Um, I have things I have put out to take off and be able to provide a lot of job. That is not happening because there's no roads, there's no anything, nowhere to go for anything. Um, thank you, Your Excellency. Uh, that's my question. Please, can I, can I have two more people here? Joseph, okay, Onyuzu, are you there? 
If not, is Clem Okoji there? Is Joe o o Onye Izu there to ask his question regarding the embassy here? Okay. Uh, Double Doc is here, uh, Doctor. Lady Clem Okoji is here. Okay, go ahead. Please make it quick. Whom do you want to go ahead? Is it Clem? Yeah, Clem. Oh, good evening, Your Excellency. My name is Lady Clem Okoji. I'm one of the lead organizers. I started, I was called upon to um, be part of this um, experience, which I enjoyed so much. It is so and, important. And so, um, um, in addition to other um, financial um, contributions, and my question without waste of time, um, Nigeria is evidently divided into contrasting groups by religious, ethnic, and cultural opinions. What is your plan on uniting the country when you become the president? Secondly, the SME, that's the small, medium businesses, enterprises, development across the country or any country is the core foundation of economic establishment and stability. How do you hope to work on encouragement of SME for the youth and unemployed in Nigeria? Thank you, Your Excellency and distinguished ladies and gentlemen. Is Joe Onyezu on the line? Is Joseph Onyezu on the line? If it's not, it's... Um, it's I think, I think uh, Double Doc is on the line too, and she's been present. Oh, double, doc, double Doc, please, you, are, you take the uh, podium to ask your question. All right, please, I promise to keep this under two minutes, like as we were pro promised. Okay. Good evening, everyone, and uh, Your Excellency, we welcome you. I'm Double Doc and G.U.K. Ume Ora. My husband, Dr. Michael Ume Ora, and I reside in Houston, Texas, and we were part of the large group that welcomed you and your team when you visited Houston. We accepted this invitation to join the PA team organizing this event because we've been very eager to contribute to your effort to build a new Nigeria for us and for our future generations. Thank you very much for making out this time today to be with us. The Nigerian nation is actually overflowing with expectations from your God ordained emergence as the person to move Nigeria to the promised land, your excellency. My husband and I bought 274 hectares of land at Nsoka in the mid 90s, actually with the very first money we made here in the United States. We had the hope of developing it into a palm plantation. All our efforts have failed due to what I have decided to term the Nigerian factor. Your Excellency, this bad investment did not stop us. In 2004, we moved back to Nigeria, built a noodle company. Our a factory building alone was 132 meters by 64 meters long. And we actually brought out a product into the market, Chef Me Noodles. No money borrowed with our seed money. At that time, Indomie was the only other Nodo company in the market. Now, after spending 10 years at home, this venture also failed due to the same Nigerian factor. In what ways will the new Nigeria, under your leadership, provide the necessary infrastructure that can assist diaspora investment, especially in the area of agriculture. Thank you, sir. Is, is Gethsemane Ugochuku online? Okay, Onyizu, Joseph Onyizu is online now. He, he's been unmuted. 
Oh, Listen, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good evening, everyone. Your Excellency, thank you for being part of this event today and thanks for the wonderful lecture. My team was responsible for providing security at the live event. Um, we liaise with the local law enforcement to make sure our people are safe and also the safety of all those that were going to come with you. So now in the diaspora, we have a challenge. Our challenge is uh, with getting Nigerian passport, either an old or new passport. The process is cumbersome. People are getting frustrated with the attitude of people at the embassies, not just in the US, in Europe, in the, in the UK, and all, all over the world. So our question now is, what would you do to, to clean up these inefficiencies and this you know, attitude that we have at the US embassies all over the world? Thank you. Mama T, can Mama T take on, please? And Getsemani has been unmuted. So oh, Mama Getsemani, okay, Getsemani has been unmuted. Mama Getsemani, you can ask a question. Yeah, Getsemani, go ahead. Hello, Hello. 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 Oh, Mama T, Mama T is on. Mama T, go ahead. Oh, Mama T, go yeah, ahead. Uh, yeah, I'm on Pueblo, Mama T. I was called by uh, Dr. Uda. I'm the... Uh, top uh, in Philadelphia. My question to you, Excellency, what will you do for people in diaspora to be able to catch their votes in Nigeria when you are there? Thank you. Uh, get so many, are you there? Yes, I am here. Okay, it's go ahead. Yeah, my name is Getsemane Chuku. I'm the president of LIPA. And LIPA is a law enforcement and armed forces association based in the United States of America. And our members are drawn mainly from the southeastern and south south states of Nigeria. We have as members police officers, correctional officers, members of the USA Armed Forces, cyber security personnel, forensic crime experts, and those in the federal and state intelligence units. Uh, so basically, insecurity is the biggest issue today in Nigeria. So my question is this. What kind of reform does your government envisage to promote professionalism in the Nigerian police force, as well as any incentive packages or reform that the Bidati government plans to implement in order to help strengthen our security system in Nigeria. I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So at this, at, uh, Doc, I think, Dr. Tudor, I think at this point, this is a very yeah. good place to end it for the night. We'll pass it over to His Hello? Excellency. All other questions will be collected me, and emailed to him, and he can uh, reach let out me, to the Let us. me ask, uh, for a minute, let me go back and say that I just want to ask something or request, humbly request something. I don't think that I want to finish this question. Can we go back to him? Yes, please. Dr. Odera, go ahead. Thank you, Excellency. Uh, <clears throat> thank you so much, His Excellency. Um, and thank you for giving me this opportunity. Um, just like Dr. Do had mentioned when she started, I'm the chair of the program event. I honestly did not have any question for you. Um, the last time you joined us on Zoom, on the Saturday that we were supposed to have the live event, I asked you my question then. What I was trying to do was just to uh, call up people who had questions to ask. But since it was so gracious of you, to ask this question, I will go back again for the benefit of those who did not join on that Saturday to ask you. And uh, you could take it as a question, you could also take it as a comment. But what I would like to know is if you're able to tell us what you would count as successes in your first 100 days in office. Uh, usually in this country, anybody who takes office, be it the president be the governor, usually go for projects or programs that they could point to in their first 100 days, just to give impetus to that office and uh, encourage uh, people who they govern to continue to believe in them. 
And I just want to ask you again, His Excellency, do you have things that you have in mind that you would like to point to at the end of your first 100 days as successes that you would have achieved? And lastly, I told you then, I see you as the next president of uh, Nigeria. Come May 2023, 27th, you're going to be inaugurated as the next president of Nigeria. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Thank, thank you. Thank you. I, I will just believe that, uh, sorry, I didn't know you were trying to call out the people who asked questions when you were cutting. I just felt like, well, let me just try a little bit and see whether I can make any sense of all these things I said. We have about 10, 11 questions here. And I'll start from the last, last thing, issue of insecurity and what we're going to do differently. I've said, and I'll repeat again, the number one priority Thank for you. anybody who is coming into government now. Are you hearing me? Everyone, please place yourself on mute so we can hear, we can hear you. Sir. Yeah, so you want to take your... Please put yourselves on mute. Everyone, please go on mute, except His Excellency. Are you hearing me? Yes, we can. Yes, we we do. Sorry. <laughs> we can hear you. Okay. Like I've always said, not one part of anybody who wants to serve here is issue of insecurity. Insecurity is number one job of government. And we intend to do that and tackle it on head on as soon as we have the opportunity. And this will be, we will be going where we review and restructure the entire architecture ensure that it's probably man to make it to be responsive and responsive. And what am I saying? We will do the right thing. And if anything goes wrong, those who are involved, if you're not delivering, we we'll go. And I can say, and that you will be in charge. The box will stop at my desk and I'll take decisions that will make us secure this country. There's a lot of things we said we're going to do true of ensuring there's a multi level policy. On each of that, that's why I'm putting a solid excitement for a and this is the last time that has brought not vote. They can be remitting $20 billion, contributing, like I've always said, we need them in terms of rights, in terms of funding. They are voting in Kenya. They are voting in Angola. They are voting in Ghana. They must vote in Nigeria. And it's not record sign. For our embassy, and the hardship. It is because people are posted and are in embassy based on the same traditional way from Nigeria. So they don't know what their job is. I can't to the bridge and the area where police will be friendly. Send it all that way in embassy. I know what they're doing. And that is what we're going to do. That will change. That will be made to know that their job is actually to look out for Nigerians, to be friendly to them, 
to do with the issues speedily and everything. And I assure you that we will ensure proper supervision and deal with those who are not interested. It's very well talked about the, how their business failed because of the Nigerian factor. I said it repeatedly. I will support any good investment. We will not see you fail. The idea you can't talk about production. We have today millions of unemployed people. We cannot solve it. We cannot start employing them if we don't support cooperation. So try. When we talk about pulling Nigeria from consumption to production, the priority is to ensure that we have thriving business that will employ labor. That's what we want to do. Today, Nigeria is not producing enough. We can't feed ourselves. And that is unacceptable. Even India, with 1.4 billion people living on 3.2 million square kilometers of land, can feed. Herself and the sport groups. Nigeria is one seventh of the population and we live on one third of their land, which means we have more land space, farm culture, but 60% of our arable land is all cultivated. We need to do that. And our processing sector, so we need to support, support business. Again, what Patricia mentioned, he mentioned about this security, which I said we will deal with in terms of infrastructure and support for MSNEs. I assure you that even in America, where it is, MSNEs, small business, are the engine of the economy. In developing countries, they are most critical. I've heard it from China, India, to Indonesia. If I use Indonesia, which is closest to our population, there are about 250 million or 265, we're 220. 97% of the country is MSMEs. And that is very critical. We are not doing a lot, we're not producing. Anything because we don't support production, and you can't support production without supporting MSME. It's critical, and that's what uh, Claire mentioned, Trisha mentioned. Claire was emphasizing on asking how to deal with issue of ethnic and religious. I've campaigned on it. I've considered it that the next year's election will not be based on tribe, no tribe buys bread, rice, or any food cheaper in the market in Nigeria. All tribes are suffering the same. If I do not, that has always led the country. Even if you got the nine, ten forest, Nigeria, nine is from the north. So it's not a tribal issue. It is not an issue of religion, no religion by speech, no religion by any teacher, no religion of any teacher. So all the religion is suffering. And it's not anybody's fault, shouldn't be. The people who claim that um, I come from that area, that, 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 that,
proud of being in the democracy. But I'm running this election as a Nigerian who believe in Nigeria and who believe that I'm best suited and I urge Nigerians both me responsible now change here. So we we'll do everything to support MSMEs because they're going to help us to build a better economy. We we'll do everything to make sure the society is secure. We we'll do everything to support good infrastructure. These are two common questions that came from Patricia and Claire. We talk about 100 days in office now. Like I told you, Nigeria problem is not about 100 days in office. The only thing I can tell anybody about 100 days in office. Sorry, so well, I think we'll end this now. We can bring civility. We can enjoy Christmas in Nigeria. So as soon as it finishes this sentence, we'll have to cut. We have to bring civility and order in government so that people can start seeing government mm -hmm. as their own, what they can trust, behavior, conduct, everything will be done properly. We will start seeing things differently. When Elon you know, talked about the issue of that's what being used for production. That's exactly what we're going to do. We want you to come and invest here. So that for your investment, you can support what you are supporting here. What you are doing here, you are remitting money to keep people going. You become a welfare support. We want you to be an investor where people can, you can actually make more money, do things from here. Globalization, that you have advantage today. The world is looking for where to buy from. With COVID, the Western world is looking for other sources of supply because they found out that they have a lot of coming out of Asian countries, especially China. So there's other alternatives, and there's a lot we can do which will help us be more productive when we look at our production. Today, Bangladesh. Is exporting clothing alone at six billion dollars. That is more than Nigerian entire export last year, including the famous oil. Our total export last year was 18.9 billion naira. If you divide it by about six, which is actual uh, people buy money today. Is about it's under 30 billion dollars. The federal government is using for seven but people like me don't get that. So I use the one I get. She's fifty to divide, and it gives me under 30 billion. That is what Bangladesh is doing in Kloni. That is what if Vietnam did about. $32 billion in the same clothing. This is what we can do in Amba. This is what we can do all over the place. And be able to compete. So I'm looking what I just said about not being productive. Our total export is about $30 billion. When Vietnam, as half of our population, lives on one third of our land, we live on now that three. Thousand kilometers with the 200, over 200 million population. There are 100 million living, 1,000 square kilometers. Their export is over 350 billion dollars. We, we need to deal with it. That's why we're having problem with SCM, which is controlled by your reserve. Your reserve is. A function of the export. So we need to turn it around. Next year, the lecture has to face character, competence, commitment, most especially. This job requires physical and mental energy to be able to do the job. And we're urging you 
for this support. Once again, I apologize that we could not do this same pattern when it's planned. We rest assured we have time for more and more interactions as we go along. And if we succeed, that is the beginning of interaction. Because we want to learn. A leader must be a learner. He must be a listener, be a learner. That is the only way we can succeed. And you Thank know you. what you can do to help us. Thank you very much. Is there any way you, we can close with a music for you that was written? You just relax your brain. And maybe those of us is being we sung. Have to, we, have, we have to call. Maybe we'll do it some other time. I listen to the music. I assure you, we'll definitely, I definitely come back. But that music, because I need it. You yeah. help us, but we're keeping your people here when they should do with their families in Christmas. So we'll stop. Right. But I assure you, I will come back. Definitely. And an announcement. Um,